Here we're going to look at a nice little probability problem that can be solved with first semester calculus techniques. So our goal is to find the probability that a dart thrown at a random spot on a square hits the board closer to the center than it does the edge. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll put this in the Cartesian coordinate plane, in other words, the XY plane, and we'll do it in a way so that the board is scaled so that it has length two. And we'll also center it at the origin. So in other words, this point up here will be the point one, one. Here will be the point one minus one, minus one, minus one, and then minus one comma one. And then that means that the coordinate axes go straight through the middle of this thing. Since the dart hits the board at a random spot, we know that it's equally likely to land in any of these four quadrants. So we might as well solve the problem only considering the dart landing in this first quadrant. Furthermore, we can split this first quadrant into half by looking at the line right here, which is y equals x and only consider what happens when the dart lands in this triangle right here, which is like pretty easy to work with. Finally, we'll take this triangle and break it into pieces that are closer to the origin versus pieces that are closer to the edge. And I'm just gonna hack this uh, curve in here, but maybe it'll look a little bit like that. And so let's go ahead and say that this area right here is A, and notice that our goal will be to determine the probability that the dart will land closer to the origin than it does the edge will be exactly the area of this yellow shaded region divided by the area of the entire triangle. But that makes our goal, which is this probability, equal to, like I said, the area of that yellow shaded region divided by the area of this entire triangle. But notice that the base of this triangle is one and the height of this triangle is also one, which makes uh, the area one half, one half base times height, but that means the probability will be exactly twice this area. Great, so now we just have to calculate this area and we'll do that first by calculating what this curve is. So let's say that this point XY is a point on the curve. And so that means it satisfies the rule that it has the same distance to the origin as it does to the edge. So let's go ahead and write down those two distances. So the distance to the origin of this point, just using the distance formula, that's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. Great. And then the distance to the edge, since the x coordinate is larger than the y coordinate, we know that that's just 1 minus x. Great. So now we just set those things equal to each other and we'll get an equation for this curve. So notice we have 1 minus x equals the square root of x squared minus y squared. Great, but maybe we'll square this to get rid of the square root. And that gives us x squared minus 2x plus 1. That's what we get if we square this left-hand side. Equals x squared plus y squared. That's what we get if we square this right-hand side. So notice this x squared cancels with that x squared. And now we can solve that for x and we'll get that x equals um, 1 minus y squared over 2. So this is really like a sideways facing parabola. It's a parabola facing in this direction. Good. So the next thing that we want to notice is that we can calculate this area right here by looking at the integral from y equals 0 to this intersection point of the rightmost curve, which is this minus the leftmost curve, which is y equals x. So what that means is that we need to find this intersection point right here where our curve defined by this equation crosses the curve y equals x. So let's see what we get for that. So if we just plug y equals x into this, or maybe x equals y into this, that'll be kind of the same thing. That gives us y equals 1 minus y squared over 2 which tells us that we get y squared plus 2y minus 1 equals 0. Now we can easily solve that using the quadratic formula, and what you'll see is we'll get y equals negative 1 plus the square root of 2. So what that means 
is that this coordinate right here is given by negative 1 plus root 2 comma negative 1 plus root 2 because we know the x and the y coordinate are the same. Okay, so now just to reiterate what we're going to do, we're going to integrate over this region as a function of y, the right hand curve minus the left hand curve from y equals 0 up to y equals this point. So in fact, like our little rectangles would be defined by these lines right here. So we've got right curve minus left curve, and then that line is going up. So that means our area can be written as the integral from 0 to this intersection point, negative 1 plus root 2. Then we've got the right curve, which is 1 minus y squared over 2, uh, minus the left curve, which is the curve x equals y, so that's just minus y. And then we have dy. Now it's just like taking the antiderivative and plugging things in, so the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. So let's see we, what we get. We get a half, so that's going to integrate out to y over 2. And then next we'll have minus y squared over 2, so that's going to integrate out to minus y cubed over 6. And then next minus y, so that's going to integrate out to minus y squared over 2. Great. And so now we need to evaluate that at 0 and at minus 1 plus square root of 2. Great. But what you get if you plug in 0, you obviously just get 0. That's pretty easy to see. And then I'll let you guys check what you get when you plug in negative 1 plus root 2. But what you end up with is negative 5 plus 4 root 2 over 6. Great. And so that's just some like arithmetic. Now, that is the area of this region, but we don't want the area of this region. We want twice the area of this region because we earlier argued that our probability would be that area of the region divided by the area of the whole triangle, which was a half, which means our probability is twice the area of this region, which tells us that our probability is equal to minus 5 plus 4 root 2 over 3 because that's what we get if we double that. Okay. So now maybe some follow-up questions that we could do here is what if you had a hexagonal chalkboard? I think maybe that's also an interesting one to look at, or maybe an octagonal. Um, so maybe a nice follow-up question would be, can we solve the same problem where we have a hexagonal dartboard? So maybe try it out and post in the comments what you get. And that's a good place to stop.